Hi, it's Len Kamerman from Hero Technical Solutions. In this video, I'm going to show you the new features that have been added to ACT since version 2005. The reason I put this video together is because ACT 2012 has just come out, and I'm realizing that not only are customers who are on ACT 2010 and 2011 looking to upgrade, but also customers who are on older versions like ACT 2006, 2007, and so on. So what I've done in this video is I have picked the most significant three features, in my opinion, from each version and listed those. Some of them I'll just talk about briefly, others I'm actually going to show you what they look like inside of ACT 2012, even though they may have been introduced in different versions. Okay, so first up, ACT 2005. This was the first SQL version of ACT. And we got company records. We got dynamic groups as well as advanced queries. And improved synchronization. Okay, so I'll show you company records and dynamic groups. In terms of synchronization, the model was completely rewritten in ACT 2005. Had some kinks to work out, but it was a far improvement over the synchronization in ACT 6 and earlier. Company records give me a place to keep main company information, like a primary phone number, mailing address, as well as a list of the contacts that are linked to that company, which I can click on to navigate to the contact, and I can click on the company to navigate back, and rolls up the notes, history, and activities for all the contacts in that company, all in one place. Advanced queries allow me to do a, a search with multiple lines of criteria in a fairly easy to use way. For example, I want to find all of my customers in New York that I haven't met with in a year. So I'm going to look up ID status, contains customer, and I'm going to find state equal to New York as well as last meeting date is older than 365 days. I preview and there I've got three contacts and I can look them up. Now I can also set up my groups to work based on advanced queries so they're dynamic. So I can set up a group that will always show me customers who I haven't met with in a year. In ACT 2006, we got the ACT scheduler, which allowed us to automate synchronization and backups. We can now set contact to access en masse. In ACT 2005, we got the ability to make contacts not just public or private, but also specify access for individual users and teams but we couldn't do that to more than one contact at a time. So in 2006, that feature has been added. As well, we got the group and company tree view. The Act Scheduler allows us to automate backups and synchronization. It's found on the Tools menu and can be used to set up tasks that run at whatever time we want. So for example, remote databases can be set up to synchronize automatically and you can set your database to backup perhaps daily at a certain time. We also get the ability to update the access on multiple contacts at once. So if I tag all three of these contacts, right click, I can edit the contact access and give access to just particular users and teams. Also, we get the group and company tree view. For example, if I bring up the companies, we have this tree view on the side. This was introduced in ACT 2006. In ACT 2007, we got the ability to change the links between company and contact fields. So now if you had customized your company or contact records and wanted to do some additional field linking or change the links, you can do that. In the premium version of the product, we got field level security. So you could set particular fields to be full access, read only, or hidden depending on which user or team was accessing the database. The ACT scheduler is also updated to do database maintenance as well. That's something we set our customers up to do once a week. We're now able to specify which fields are linked between contacts and companies via the Define Fields menu. I can pick a particular field that is not linked right now, for example, Fax Phone and link it to the fax phone field on a contact record. 
I can also set field level security via the define fields menu. For example, if I didn't want the billing address to change, I can go in, I can edit field security, and I can choose the default permission as being read only, and then set only the administrators to have full access. In Act 2008, we're now able to add shortcuts to documents instead of just attaching to the database. We have company and group security. So just like we could make contacts limited access and, and give access to particular users or teams, we can now do that for companies and groups as well. And we can add multiple contacts to an opportunity. I'm going to add a number four here. It's not really a feature of native act, but there is some ability in the back end to add custom tables. So now with a third party add-on like Topline Designer, it's possible to add additional record types. Anything from pets to insurance policies to software licenses can now be added to the database. I can attach a document without actually making a copy of it and attaching it to the database just by attaching a shortcut to it. So I add a document, I now have the new shortcut option, and I can pick a file, and that file actually stays where it was sitting originally. It shows me the path here, and I can open it directly from ACT, but it's not a copy that's attached to, to the database. I can also set limited access on the companies and the groups now by going to the Company Info tab and choosing either Public, Private, or actually setting limited access. Here's an example of a custom table within ACT. I can now attract insurance records for each of my contacts. I can click the Add button to add a new record, and I have all these customized fields for tracking insurance. So this is just an example. You could track anything you wanted and create whatever fields you need to do that, so long as you're on ACT 10.2 or later, and have a license of Topline Designer. In 2009, we got improved Outlook integration. We got things like the quick attach button to easily attach messages to our history, and the ability to create contacts and activities directly from Outlook. We can recall our previous lookups, and we got the relationships tab, which allows us to associate contacts with each other and navigate back and forth between them easily. I'm gonna add another fourth one here as well. It's not a huge feature, but it's something that I asked for and really, and really wanted to see in the product. So I actually took the uh, lyrics to Yesterday by the Beatles and changed them up to explain to Richard McMakin why I thought there should be a Yesterday filter added in the product, <laughs> and it got added. So that's number four for Act 2009. Improved Outlook integration lets us not only just record email messages that we send and receive from Outlook, but we now have a button to attach, and we've got a button for quick attach, which matches the contact based on the email address, so I don't have to actually pick the contact. I can also create a new ACT contact from the email message. So this is a test message I sent, and the contact that comes up, it fills in the name and the email address already, and I can fill in the rest. Or I can take the body of the email and create a new activity, and we can schedule it from here. I can check out my previous lookups by going to the lookup menu and then going to Previous, and it shows the last, I believe it's about 20 or so lookups that are done. So if I do a, a lookup, whether it's simple or complicated, it will return me to that particular record or that particular lookup just by clicking. Also, we get the Relationships tab, which means that we can take a contact, go to Relationships, and relate it to another contact in the database. And if I want, I can, I can define what the relationship is. It's optional, but if you want to record that, you can choose it from the drop-down list, and you can add and remove from this, and even record details if you want. Once that's done, now from Susie's record, I can navigate to Mike's record and back and forth. In Act 2010, we got improved navigation. We got the big buttons at the top of the screen, and really the look of the product changed, and it got a little easier to use. We also got the Web Info tab, which allowed us to pull information from web pages and, and bring up things like the weather or driving directions based on the contact we're looking at, or even find them in LinkedIn. 
Act eMarketing was now built in. So what is called Swift Page is now available in Act as Act eMarketing without additional software to install, though it is a subscription-based service. And I couldn't narrow it down to three on this one. So this is actually a fourth significant change in Act 2010. The opportunity records underwent a huge upgrade. The new look that you've been seeing was introduced in Act 2010. We've got the big easy buttons at the top here that make it easy for us to use the most commonly used functions. And we've also got a new navigation system on the side here with a built-in lookup menu and the nav bar that navigates to the other areas of the program, as well as the welcome page, which is a great place to check out some featured videos and find some getting started information to get you up to speed using ACT. We've also got the web info tab. So if I pull up a contact record and I go to the web info tab, and I might want to resize this, I can go and find the contact website now, this website doesn't exist, it's a test one here, but I could see, I can search for that contact on LinkedIn. It's asking me to log on there. Or I can pull up driving directions, which will take my driving my address in ACT and map them against the address of this contact. And you can pull that up here, but you can also launch this in a separate browser window to give you a little bit more room on the screen. One of my favorite upgrades to ACT over the last few releases has also been the changes to opportunities. Opportunities are now their own record. It used to be opportunities kind of hung off the contacts, but an opportunity is now a fully customizable entity. You can add whatever custom fields you want to it. So if you need to track other information, you're not limited to eight fields that are, are next to each other with some limitations. You can add whatever kind of fields you want, and then you can link those to contacts two groups and companies, your products and services show up down below, and you can attach notes, activities, history, and everything else that you could do with only contacts, companies, and groups before with an opportunity as well. In 2011, we got Smart Tasks, compatibility with Office 2010, and we can filter by history types. Smart tasks are a little too complicated to demonstrate quickly on uh, this list of features, but basically they allow you to automate the creation of activities and the sending of some emails and email marketing campaigns based on conditions in your database. Office 2010 compatibility is straightforward. It allows you to work with Outlook 2010 as well as do mail merges with Word 2010 and integrate with Excel 2010 as well. And then history filtering allows you to filter what kind of history you want to look for. So now we can really drill down here. If I only want to see phone calls, not just all history, but now we can pick just phone calls, for example, or whatever kind of filtering you want to do here. Maybe we only want to see email. We can turn off all the other options and just do attached email. This is good for when you're looking for company records and you have a lot of history from multiple contacts or even contacts that you've had a lot of communication with. In 2012, the new release, we have Scratchpad, Universal Search, and Sajak Connect. Sajak Connect which is introduced at the same time as ACT 2012, but is compatible with ACT 2010 and later, allows me to synchronize my database with the cloud and access my database through a tablet or other mobile device. So I'm showing you a bit of a mock-up of an iPad here. This isn't a real iPad, but so that I can show this to you on a, on a video recording, I'm going to go ahead and log in. And you can see what it looks like and what it might look like on your tablet device. Here I have a list of my contacts that I can pull up. I have my activities, and I can click on them, and I can bring up details about that contact. For this contact, you can see I've got the phone number, address here, some notes in history. I've also got my calendar. So this is an easy way to access information on the go, and the pricing is pretty good. Uh, the regular price is $69 per user per year. 
Right now there's a promotion on, so at around $5 a month, this is a pretty good way to be able to pull up your contacts and your calendar uh, on a tablet or other mobile device. Scratchpad is a little notepad that allows me to jot down notes throughout my day. And what's different about this than using something like Windows Notepad is that I can clear these items off, I can, can mark them as completed, and if I find something that's significant enough that I need to record history or schedule an activity, I can send it over to ACT. Okay, and it fills in whatever I had on my notes. It puts in the regarding line for me. And it can run even when ACT's not running. It just needs to have ACT open in order to be able to send the information over to ACT. Universal Search is really useful because it allows me to search not only contact information, but also attached documents. So for example, if I have PDFs or Word documents attached and they are resumes, and I need a JavaScript programmer, I can type in JavaScript, and it returns to me the attachments that matched, as well as any other record types. And I can tell it, you know, only give me contact records, or only give me history, and filter these on, on whatever that like. And from here I can directly open up these documents.